Hi, everyone, and welcome to our weekly wellness webinar. Um, just want to say hello to everyone coming into the room today, and we're very excited um, to have our uh, partners here from Southern California University of Health Sciences and Dr. Pritideep Singh, who's going to be presenting today on establishing an interprofessional model in an integrative health sciences university. So as um, before we get started, um, and as folks are coming in, if this is the first time that you're joining us, the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine is a global interprofessional integrative health association working to transform healthcare, body, mind, spirit, community, and planet. And um, for those of you, um, if this is your first time joining us, um, all of our webinars are kind of a public service to the integrative health community, and uh, we've stream them on Facebook Live, um, which we're doing right now. And then we um, will put the recordings up on YouTube. So if you join our and subscribe to our YouTube channel, AIHM Global, you can go back and watch them again, share them with colleagues and friends. And we really encourage that. And um, before we get started, um, we wanted to let everyone know that um, we have a special going on right now for the AIHM Fellowship Program, which is a really incredible two-year program for um, licensed clinicians. Um, and you can get $2,000 off uh, the tuition and $100 off the application fee if you're a new applicant to the April 2023 cohort. Um, and this is available until December 31st of this year. So um, if you're interested, definitely apply and take advantage of this generous offer. So I'm so thrilled to um, introduce our special guest today. Uh, Dr. Pradeep Singh is the Assistant Dean um, at the, of the Department of Interprofessional Education um, and an Associate Professor in the Department of basic sciences at Southern California University of Health Sciences. He joined, he actually joined the AIHM Fellowship as one of our White House scholars um, this year in October. So welcome as a fellow, Dr. Singh. He's also um, the Association of Chiropractic Colleges representative to the Interprofessional Education Collaborative um, Core Competency Revision Working Group. And IPEC is a very um, well-respected organization, um, one of the leaders in interprofessional education um, in the United States. And he's also, his research interests include cardiorespiratory physiology and autonomic function. So welcome, Dr. Singh, and we're really excited to hear your presentation today. Thank you, Tabby. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really glad to be here and presenting this uh, webinar. We'll go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, all right. So uh, today I'll be presenting on establishing an interprofessional model in an integrative health sciences university. Uh, some of my disclosures. Uh, I'm currently employed as the assistant dean for the Department of Interprofessional Education here at Southern California University of Health Sciences. Uh, I do serve as the representative of Association of Chiropractic Colleges to the IPEC Core Competency Revision Working Group. Uh, this group is tasked with revising the 2016 IPEC Core Competencies for Interprofessional Education and Collaborative Practice. Uh, Southern California University of Health Sciences is also a sponsoring institution for AIHM. Today's learning objectives include uh, describing the importance of integrative healthcare, describe the history of Southern California University of Health Sciences, describe the developmental process of SCU's ITE model, and summarize its various components. And we'll also talk about some challenges and solutions that we have implemented, ex experienced and implemented in this IPE model. Let's talk about integrative healthcare first. As we all know that integrative healthcare is a distinct approach to care 
where it involves bringing together not only the complementary but conventional treatment approaches in a coordinated manner to address an individual's health needs. Integration may happen at the level of the practitioner, team, clinic, or health system. And it's based upon the philosophy of care that encompasses the following four components. Whole person health, holistic perspective, personalized or individualized care, patient-centeredness, and a focus to wellness. And the question arises is, what's the need of integrative health care and SCA? We've seen that there has been an increased demand for value-based integrative health care. It has been associated with uncontrolled healthcare costs, suboptimal outcomes and patient satisfaction, aging population, and an increased focus on wellness. Integrative health is SCU's perspective on health and well being. It is realized by our educational and healthcare service offerings. We know that there is an opportunity to fully tap into the demand for patient practices that can integrate whole person healthcare within mainstream medicine. And only then we can shift away from a prescriptive model of care to a predict and prevent model of care. The question arises is how do we prepare our students for integrative healthcare? That's where SCU comes in. SCU is a private nonprofit integrative healthcare institution located in Whittier, Southern California. It actually has a long history, started in 1911 by Dr. Charles Kale as Los Angeles College of Chiropractic, LACC. It located to its current campus in Whittier in 1981. In fact, it was one of the first chiropractic programs to obtain accreditation from WASC and one of the first chiropractic institution to obtain federal grant money for research. SCU believes in educating students to be competent and caring integrative healthcare practitioners. We offer multi-program offerings ever since 2006. Southern California University of Health Sciences was created to house both the LACC and the new College of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine way back in 2006. And in 2014, SCU became the first university in the country to offer a first professional doctorate in acupuncture and oriental medicine. We launched the physician assistant program in 2016 to create that integrative combination of both conventional and complementary medicine offerings. Additional program offerings include accelerated health sciences, bachelor's in health sciences, master's in medical sciences, Master of Acupuncture in Chinese Medicine, Master's in Human Gen Gen Genetics and Genomics, along with Ayurveda Wellness Educator and Practitioner Certificate programs. And then there are some upcoming programs as well, including occupational therapy as well as physical therapy. Now, as we go along, we'll talk about the mission, vision, and values of SCU, which are imbibed in our DNA, if I were to take the uh, analogy of genomics. SEU's vision is to transform and redefine health and healthcare education. Our mission, to educate students as com competent, caring, and successful integrative healthcare practitioners and professionals. SEU's values include integrative health, evidence-based practice, health equity, and inclusivity. Three of the six SCU goals that are articulated in our institutional, refresh institutional plan to 2023, require us to continually evaluate and 
advance our interprofessional education. This includes advancing patient-centered, whole-person integrative healthcare education, validating the integrative healthcare model, and meet the needs of current and future practitioners. In fact, SEU's one of the six learning outcomes is integrative healthcare, whereby the graduate will serve as an effective member of a healthcare team, collaborating with other professionals to improve health and patient outcomes for health and of individuals and of the community. Now, how can we achieve integrative healthcare? And that brings us to interprofessional education. As we all are well aware of that interprofessional education occurs when students from two or more professionals learn about, from, and with each other to enable effective collaboration and improved health outcomes. Once the students understand how to work interprofessionally, they will be ready to enter the workplace as a member of a collaborative practice team. And this is one of the key steps and moving the health systems from fragmentation to position of strength. IPE is the need of the R. It's an, it is responding to an urgent need for health professionals to work together to create new models of care. And our future healthcare professionals must be prepared to lead and collaborate in interprofessional teams, all the more evident when we are working in an integrative environment. Interprofessional teams enhance the quality of patient care, lower costs, and reduce medical errors. It is evidence that medical er errors are third leading cause of death in the United States, and they, we expect healthcare to increase by 20.1, by 2025% for our GDP. The Institute of Healthcare Improvement has outlined the quadruple aim, which provides this framework for optimizing health systems performance, which includes not only improving the patient experience of care, health outcomes of population, reducing the costs per capita, as well as improving provider care experience. HPAC has Pretty nicely mentioned that in order to provide this quality of and cost-effective care, health professions must be better prepared to lead and collaborative in interprofessional teams. So taking this, this, uh, this base for interprofessional education, this need for interprofessional education, the work at SCU has been going on for quite a while. Under the amazing uh, vision and guidance of our president, Dr. Scringe, who has led the charge of IP integration way back in 2006 by incorporating the acupuncture and Chinese medicine into, the, into mainstream uh, medical uh, healthcare. Um, in 2015, university faculty and administration attended the Interprofessional Education Collaborative Conference. And that was the initiating point of the transformation that happened beyond those days. In 2019, SCU Provost led a program 360 evaluating program design principles and supporting and determining the support the university needs to further develop IPE to achieve those principles. Taking this into consideration, there was a SWOT analysis done, which provides us with some opportunities. We could establish SCU as a leader in professional education and integrative healthcare. We can develop IP outcomes activities so students not only learn from and about each other and not just with each other. 
you can enhance the clinical interprofessional education experience and bridge the gap between didactic and clinical experience. Some of us, we know that as the hidden curriculum. Differentiate SCU by leading mainstream complementary and integrative health, IPE, IPP, framework and pathways. Expand some research opportunities associated with IPE. Creating university-wide approach that extends beyond academics into marketing, student development and more. And finally, expanding those IP opportunities to certificate undergraduate and MSMS students. Taking this SWOT analysis into consideration, the SCU developed the SCU model of interprofessional education. And what I'll summarize in the next few slides is a high overview of the interprofessional education model here at SCU. SEU's model of interprofessional education comprises of its four pillars or four components. The curricular framework, the symposia, care pathways, as well as co-curricular student development. This is all tied to assessment and provided by the administrative infrastructure. Let's look at the first component of curricular framework. The IP curricular framework was developed using industry standard guidelines that included ACGME, IPEC, ACIH, HPAC, and the vision and knowledge of SEU's academic leadership. Now, what is this curricular framework? The curricular framework is tied to the development of an individual professional identity, as well as a dual identity of a member of a collaborative team. The framework is actually based upon the four IPEC competency domains of values and ethics, roles and responsibilities, interprofessional communication and teams and teamwork. These four Competencies domains currently have 39 sub-competencies. And they are currently being revised in the 2023 revision. The framework itself is tied to achieving outcomes in key areas that reflect SCU's commitment to health equity of patient care, health systems, population health, and underserved communities. The IPE curriculum is also mapped to IPEC competencies, our university learning outcomes and program learning outcomes. They're also mapped to accreditation mandated competencies. Currently, that includes the PA, acupuncture and Chinese medicine programs, the chiropractic program, and upcoming occupational and therapy and physical therapy programs. For example, if we look at the chiropractic program, the accredited mandated competencies include the students have the knowledge, skills, and values necessary to function as part of an interprofessional team to provide patient-centered collaborative care. And students will be able to explain their own roles and responsibilities and those of other care providers and how the team works together to provide care. Use appropriate team building and collaborative strategies with other members of the healthcare team to support a team approach to patient centered care. In fact, 100% of our programs have some degree of IPE related coursework and learning outcomes. Moving over to the second pillar. The symposia. Now, this component of the IP models is very unique to SCU. This symposia is a four course integrative health promotion courses that are threaded in the preclinical graduate health program curriculum. 
These are case-based collaborative active learning experiences with students and faculty that cross health disciplines. In fact, we have used the 39 IPEC sub competencies and adapted them as the learning outcomes, which are introduced at appropriate program stages. The health topics that are covered in these competencies are taught, which include some of the key conditions that are most amenable to collaborative care. Our focus is on wellness and whole person integrative health. Students who undergo these symposia actually go through a standardized 16 question IPEC survey instrument before and post completion of these IHP symposia amongst other course assessments that they do. And some of the examples associated with these symposia courses are introduction to IPE and integrative health. Students learn about IPE competencies. Students learn about the scope of practice of various professions. Only, until, only if they know what the scope of practice of the healthcare team around them is, they would be able to succeed in a collaborative practice. Students learn about uh, the importance of uh, interprofessional communication. I, mean, I cannot emphasize communication enough. And the importance of teams and teamwork. In the second iteration of the symposia, we talk about domestic intimate partner violence. We talk about human trafficking, sexual assault. We have emphasis on uh, nutrition and diet, and how can we forget our veterans? We talk about veteran health as well. We talk about preventing uh, provider burnout. In ISP 300, emphasis is on creating culturally and linguistically competent providers. We have we are a melting pot of various cultures and ethnicities. And one of the challenges that providers do come across during their practice is catering to various cultures. So how can we work and understand, making our students understand the intricacies of, of becoming a linguistically and culturally competent provider? Talk about dying with dignity and today in today's day and age you know more and more emphasis on gender and sexuality how can we how can we talk about how can we understand the healthcare needs of the lgbtqia plus community and lastly the fourth iteration of this symposia courses, we talk about integrated medicine specifically. We talk about how racism affects healthcare. Students get exposed to the art of motivational interviewing. They learn about what's the importance of posture and exercise. They learn about integrative treatment to various commonly occurring conditions, for example, asthma. You learn about mindfulness and self-awareness. I'm gonna show a couple of uh, slides here uh, for the IPEC survey that we do, and just a couple of slides that show the pre and post changes on the responses when students were asked uh, before and after these symposia courses whether they were able to choose communication tools and techniques that facilitate effective team interactions. This is a pre-symposia response and this is a post-symposia response. I'm just giving a couple of examples here because the, the publication is, uh, is under draft mode right now. 
if they were when they were asked if I'm able to use strategies that improve the effectiveness of interprofessional teamwork and team-based care, again, there's there are significant difference in pre and post responses. Let's look at the third component, our care pathways. Now these are also unique to SCU and our own health faculty, our own faculty are developing these care pathways. It is pretty evident that consistent interprofessional patient management is a mark of quality and excellence and a model for integrative healthcare. You know that patient-centered care using the most appropriate care from a spectrum of providers can yield the best results, outcome, and satisfaction. Condition-based clinics can become profitable and an effective cornerstone of a clinical training in SCU. So these care pathways that our faculty are developing provide evidence-based decision-making tools and guidance. I want to make this absolutely uh, emphasize on this one. They are decision-making tools and guidance for providers. These pathways will bridge the gap between didactic and clinical courses, and they will be taught in preclinical and reinforced in clinical courses across all programs. The conditions that were chosen to create these care pathways are some of the most amenable to collaborative care. And currently we have the spine pain pathway, a headaches pathway, an osteoarthritis pathway, depression and anxiety pathway currently under development. Moving over to the fourth component of our IPE model. We not only want to provide the students the curricular exposure to interprofessional education to be effective in integrated practice, but we also want to provide them with co-curricular opportunities for development. So varieties of activities outside the classroom reinforce SCU's IP model. For example, in the year they take public health, all graduate health students are enrolled as part of their American Public Health Association, where they can learn truly about evidence-based practice, inclusivity, health equity, and integrative health. Some of our co-curricular activity support is achieved through student services, marketing, and IAI. We do uh, how, uh, we do offer student community service. We have an amazing tradition of, uh, of an event that's called as the AIDS Life Cycle, where students uh, ride with riders from uh, San Francisco all the way to Los Angeles. And our students are treating those riders as they move from San Francisco all the way to Los Angeles. They are working in a team-based environment, learning from each other, treating those, uh, those cyclists, and it's an amazing event. SCU offers tent events at very minimal cost to the community around it. We have our students' clubs and activities, acupuncture and Chinese medicine associations. Ayurveda clubs, Cal Cairo, Healing Hands for Humanity, Student American Chiropractic Association. Um, these are just a few to name, where students get exposure, not only to working with each other, with, but with other individuals from other professions as well. The professional activities, such as leaps into IM through ACIH and AIH and memberships that are available for our students as well. So as a whole, we provide a variety of opportunities for students to develop integrative healthcare knowledge and skills outside the program, outside the classrooms. We encourage student scholarship, 
we also provide future opportunities for administrators as well for development in IPE as well. Now this would not be possible. All these components would not be possible if we did not have a very strong administrative infrastructure. And to have a strong in administrative infrastructure, it has to percolate from the top. SEU has a strong leadership and organizational support for IPE. The vision for Dr. Springe, our provost, Dr. Rajan, our assistant provost, Dr. Egan, Dr. Ramchand, it all percolates down to the culture of SEU. Assistant, I'm the assistant dean for IPE, and I currently report to assistant provost, academic administration, and I oversee courses uh, that are shared among graduate health programs. So it's not only in the IHP symposia courses that our students get exposed to interprofessional education. It, there are a whole set of roughly 20 or 20 art courses where students get exposed to learning from each other and about each other and from each other. We do have a dedicated budget for the IPE department and the support provided from the Office of Institutional and Academic Insights and online learning. The support program learning outcomes provide insights into operational data and assessments and faculty learning to enhance IPE understanding of and expectations. There is, a, there is an integration into the branding and key stakeholder communication. Our marketing department integrates IP's mission, vision, and values into university branding efforts. Admissions, no. They ensure that the counselors understand and they can speak the relevance of uh, IPE when we have prospective students inquiring about a program at SCU. Furthermore, we do have an interprofessional education council. And this includes the assistant deans, program directors, and faculty representatives from all programs to implement and continuously approve SCU's model. To build on university-wide community of practice, to adopt best practices in IPE, support universities' vision of transforming and redefining health and healthcare education, and support universities' mission to educate students as competent, caring, and successful integrative health practitioners. We do have an IP advisory board, which consists of experts and leaders who offer innovative advice and dynamic perspective to IP department's leadership. The advisory board provides guidance, recommendations, and exposes new thinking and challenges and assumptions. It is our way of enhancing our connections, collaboration, network opportunities, and we have an amazing group of advisory board members. We have Dr. Scott Haldeman, who's the founder of World Spine Care, president of Bone and Joint Decades Neck Pain Task Force. Dr. David Kilgore, director of UCI's Department of Family Medicine, Integrative Medicine Residency. Dr. Michael Schneider, associate professor in Department of Physical Therapy and Clinical and Translational Science Institute, University of Pittsburgh. Dr. Laura Madania, president and CEO of Association of Schools of and Programs of Public Health and Dr. Mimi Guarneri, founder and president of the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine and clinical associate professor at UC San Diego. Lastly, the component for the IP model is the assessment. Right. Now, throughout the, the model, there are a variety of assessments that are undertaken 
we do we use utilize variety of uh, interdisciplinary uh, education perception scale interprofessional attitude scale uh, interprofessional collaborative scale ipec assessment tools tasky based upon what kind of uh, of uh, education or learning environment it is there is program and university wide assessment of curricular effectiveness patient satisfaction and clinical outcomes and in fact annual surveys done of students and faculty to talk about their experience in ipe which is very positive and all this is supported by iai now this was all about this uh, this present uh, this uh, model of scu's uh, interprofessional education but was it a smooth ride not really was it challenging absolutely but you know that that makes us you know, that makes us uh, improve ourselves right we can we should always be challenging ourselves so, so what are some of the challenges and some of the solutions that we came up with and again this is under the guidance of uh, the administrative as well as the leadership from the organization itself What we found was initially that there was lack of awareness in regards to IPE among the SCE community. And one of the uh, solutions that uh, the marketing team came up was this branding initiative. And I'll play this video in a bit. And that really shows the, the transformation, the vision for the future that SCU has for IPE. Let's go ahead and watch this short video. Since our founding in 1911, Southern California University of Health Sciences has been committed to advancing the way care is delivered by transforming the way care is taught. And now more than ever, we are on a mission to go beyond, to make education more compelling, more meaningful. Our approach to interprofessional education is unique in California and across the country. Here, modern medicine unites with ancient and traditional healing arts to create an environment of experiential learning. SCU's groundbreaking interprofessional education model combines curriculum, clinic, community, and clubs to help you develop a broader base of knowledge and gain a deeper appreciation for different perspectives on care, which leads to a seamless transition from student to practitioner. Within our framework, you're able to develop a strong professional identity within your chosen field. You will also be prepared to serve as a vital part of an interprofessional care team. We bring together aspiring students from different disciplines so you can learn and excel side by side. The depth and breadth of this dynamic experience will prepare you to one day lead in a collaborative interprofessional practice. No matter your career, you will learn to go beyond finding out what's the matter to discover what truly matters so you can help them achieve their best possible health. Spend a little time with us and you'll find that interprofessional education at SCU is about opening your eyes wide enough to see the whole person so you can treat the whole person. Thank you so much for watching. Since our founding in... Another initiative that was uh, undertaken by the IPE department was to create uh, a trimesterly newsletter. And uh, we named uh, our uh, newsletter uh, as Bridges, again, uh, thinking about collaboration uh, with uh, and building bridges among health professionals. All right. So this, uh, this newsletter is a trimester newsletter which imparts information on uh, the history of uh, interprofessional education, resources associated with interprofessional education, as well as you know, news and events uh, that are happening uh, in the university, around the university, any resources for scholarship, etc. One of the challenges we also encountered uh, during this process was that not all the programs were taking the Integrated Health Promotion Symposia. It was uh, a part of some of the core programs, such as the Physician Assistant Program currently, and then 
uh, occupational therapy and physical therapy in the future. However, it was uh, being offered as a selective or clinical hours for other programs. Incorporation of these symposia courses into other programs need curricular change. And again, those are dictated by the accreditation bodies. And gradually we are working on that process where curricular revision is going to eventually incorporate these IHP symposia into each and every health program. We also found that there was some work to be done in uh, training our faculty as well as administration as well. So faculty are encouraged to use their service hours to enhance their IP understanding and contribution. There are uh, trainings that, are, that occur prior to uh, term starting. So some preterm trainings that are held uh, in IPE before every term to guide our IP understanding of the faculty. So everyone is on the same baseline as to what the expectations are and how they can, they can teach and enhance the knowledge of their students. There's funding provided to faculty for, for scholarship. Uh, and uh, that also includes uh, having them go through an IPEC faculty training institute. So if uh, any one of you uh, is interested, go to the IPEC website and there's a, there are a whole lot of trainings available over there. There's funding uh, provided to administrators for leadership development. Again, uh, a whole lot of emphasis on, on leadership development in IPE as well. And we are currently also working on uh, creating some uh, online training modules for IPE. In order to provide uh, exposure to our students uh, across the campus and beyond, we held our inaugural annual IPE week on campus. The, the theme for the, the training were, uh, for this IPE week was focused on integrative whole person health. There were competitions, there were activities that, uh, that happened throughout the week uh, to enhance innovation, collaboration, and team building skills, and more importantly, have some fun. And those competitions, those activities were associated with uh, assessments as well. So we did gather data as well. Uh, in regards to those uh, activities. Integrative health rotations are a hallmark of SCU. Our SCU's health center and its participating locations uh, offer students the opportunity to learn in an integrative health environment. So students from a physician assistant program, for example, they get the chance to learn about acupuncture, they tend to learn about chiropractic. Students volunteer in health fairs, they work in community service events. Faculty are collaborating across universities and institutions such as UCI, Orange Coast College, VA system as well. And in fact, we are also creating a early immersion clinical experience program, whereby we can provide our students uh, early exposure to uh, clinical and service opportunities. Now, this wouldn't be possible if we didn't have focus on faculty hiring. So IPE integrative health is, is kept at the forefront of uh, hiring process as well where we can, we hire, we encourage uh, the hires to be associated with integrative health. Faculty uh, participating and encouraged to represent SCU and integrative health in local, national, and international platforms. In fact, we uh, do have a couple of our faculty, Dr. Prasad and Dr. Anu, they are AIHM, uh, previous AIHM fellows 
And currently, as uh, Tabitha mentioned, I'm currently undergoing the fellowship for AIHM as well. So this is a unique opportunity for all of us to learn and enhance integrated healthcare. Finally, to conclude, SEU has developed this unique IP model to enhance integrated whole person health and train future practitioners. This overall IP framework will enhance the individual identity of a student and the future graduate in a given profession and enhance their interprofessional identity as a healthcare team member who's competent in values, roles, communication, and teamwork. With stronger IP knowledge, skills, and attitude, will prepare graduates for future leadership roles in collaborative interprofessional practice. The model increases the depth, breadth, and connection of classroom and clinical IP experiences. This model also will also enhance our reputation and build our unique brand identity as leaders in integrative interprofessional education. And finally, I'll end with this quote that none of us, uh, including me, ever do great things, but we can all do small things with great love and together we can do something wonderful. It's all about collaboration. And we are, we are open to collaboration with individuals, with institutions, and I welcome you guys to reach out. This is my email address and my telephone number and I'll be happy to, happy to uh, collaborate. Uh, any questions? Thank you so much, Dr. Sang. That was a great presentation. I really learned a lot. And it's a really amazing what you all are doing at SCU and just the, how you've completely embedded the interprofessional thought and thinking into everything you're doing. It's really inspirational. Um, we do have a few questions um, and I can read them to you from our audience. Um, first, have students returned to talk about their experience post-graduation? Um, yes, yes, we do. Uh, we do have our, uh, we do, have our students who are a part of our alumni uh, network and they do talk about you know how how uh, how their experience at SCU has been beneficial for them in in integrative practice so they do talk about that yes uh, we do uh, we have a dedicated uh, individual who works uh, uh, with our alumni to do that and there's a three part question here, and this is, I think, more generally to just to to the integrative healthcare space. Um, how accepting are payers and insurance to compensate for integrative healthcare? Um, what disciplines do they cover now besides um, PT and and acupuncture? Um, and and is there an acceptable quantitative research to show health outcomes? and how that's positively influenced by um, complementary or integrative methods and approaches. So you, you're you welcome to take any of those. I could also um, answer. Um, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the third one. Uh, and I believe uh, we do have uh, quite a bit of evidence and you know, uh, in regards to complementary methods on how they are positively affecting uh, patient outcomes. Uh, we do have uh, ever so, you know, as 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 integrative medicine is is taking its hold, and you know, it's 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 getting more and more acceptable. Uh, we know that that we have patients who are looking for alternatives. They are looking for alternatives. They don't want to be on on uh, narcotics all their lives, right? They don't want to be on opioids for all their lives, and they're looking for other alternatives which have been uh, again with evidence has shown to be very very effective in treating especially uh, chronic pain conditions 
Um, yeah, so I would add to, um, you know, as far as payers and insurance companies are concerned, um, it really depends on the insurance company. And this is where um, both advocacy work from professions and as well as um, really the grassroots kind of pressure and um, questions from actual patients that are really asking for these services to be covered, um, along with um, the movement forward and the development. And this is really because of the research that is available. Um, when you have, for example, you know, the American College of Physicians, which is um, one of the most um, just respected institutes in the United States for the MD community, um, they issued guidelines. Um, these are really treatment guidelines um, for treating uh, low back pain. And one of the primary first steps is integrative health approaches, um, including chiropractic. And you know, chiropractic cer certainly should be added to the list of um, you know coverage. That and again, this might not, not be every insurance company in it, but there's such a, a, a the, the the that coverage is much more extensive now than it was you know, 10, 15 years ago. So that is moving forward in the in the US um, in particular. Um, and I think that we'll see that continue to change, especially as um, more and more patients are helped. You know, a lot of a lot of times the the access to care is what really keeps people from trying um, these approaches because it isn't off, often covered. It hasn't been in the past, but now as that coverage expands, um, we'll be able to also then use that data because um, it's those large healthcare systems that can really aggregate patient data and then um, put out those outcomes. Um, there's another question from Dr. Goldblatt. Um, when will you publish your paper on SCU and IPE and in what publication do you all know what where that will occur yet? Right. Uh, right now, I am uh, currently writing the paper, uh, but uh, looking forward to publishing it early next year. And uh, in one of the publications I'm looking at is the Journal of Interprofessional Education. Great. And I think um, Eliza was adding to just the non-pharmacological treatment of pain, right? There's coverage around uh, chiropractors, DCs, LACs, um, acupuncturists, and then LMTs, licensed massage therapists. So um, really, you know, we still have a lot of work to do in this area, how that coverage gets done, what, you know, what you actually get as a provider is still way too low. Um, but there are, there is movement that is happening that is super positive. So, um, you know, that, that'll only improve. Um, you know, I had a question, Dr. Singh, you know, with all of this work that SEU has been doing, this has been going on for years, right? You all have been building um, really this incredible structure. Um, how have you seen just within your own clinical care of patients? Because I know you do have um, clinical um, clinics that serve the community. Um, have, have you gotten feedback from the patients on what this has meant for them and, and how the teams work within that clinical setting? Definitely, there has been there has been positive outcomes that have been achieved uh, in patient care. You know, especially I would say, you know, our our uh, our tent events are pretty popular, where you know, uh, where patients uh, get you know a very low cost uh, uh, chiropractic and care, and uh, you know, it's 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 amazing to see how they they have been. Uh, They've been they've, we've had patients come back, you know, and you know once we have they have had the treatments and it's more for more for wellness and maintenance in fact, right? So uh, definitely uh, seeing a lot of positive outcomes uh, in the clinic as well, and uh, you know, in students. In fact, uh, I had the first hand experience of uh, of experiencing uh, uh, patient care as in our clinic uh, from the same students I had taught over. Right, and uh, I uh, I had a lower back pain for a while, and you know I ventured into my clinic, and and I, I met with uh, my own students, uh, 
the ones who had taught human physiology and you know and uh, and and clinical sciences so you know one is taking my history another one's taking my uh, is collaborating with a chiropractor and talking about you know what we need to do you know how do we need to get back to dr singh right <laughs> so so uh, there were there were uh, it was a it was a it was a very heartening experience to see uh, ipe come into fruition at that point of time where they were so so well versed with those uh, those clinical skills that would be required to make a great healthcare practitioner. That's wonderful. I mean, I think for any of us who have experienced that interprofessional care at a, at a clinical level, I mean, it, it's just not there's no comparison um, than to getting siloed kind of care. And so, you know, I do again think that. We're at the point where, especially with schools like yourself, really leading kind of what health education should look like, um, and where we we where we can actually kind of get to. Mm -hmm. um, it's really exciting because the future will really transform, you know. And and Liza also reminded me, um, you know, the Joint Commission now requires hospitals to inform. Um, patients that non-pharmacological approaches to pain are available. And so again, you know, you've got all of the policy changes happening and now you actually have to have that implementation. And I think that that's where, um, you know, really kind of reminding hospitals and health insurance systems and wherever, you know, whenever you're going to get care, um, if you are an educated patient, you can remind your own um, systems that like you, you actually have to provide this to me, you know, where I, I'd like to know what, what care I have access to within this system, because now it is required by the joint commission. And that is partly due to all of this work that's been happening for decades. So um, really exciting to, you know, envision that access actually getting to more and more people as we move forward. Absolutely. So, well, thank you again so much, Dr. Singh. I really appreciate you and, um, you know, your team and really exciting to hear all of the work um, that goes into um, what you're doing and what you're building at SCU. Right, thank you. So you know, if I was in the market to go back to school, I definitely would join that team there because it's just how you're training is really, really exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I really love talking to uh, you and, you know, and answering those questions again uh please feel free to reach out uh i'll be happy to talk about uh, future collaborations thank you so much great, great. so just to end um i would like to see just do you have any slides to share to end the Yes, they are being shared. Do you okay, it's them? just my two. Yes, there we go. I'm, I still have the Facebook Live up. Okay, great. So um, I just wanted to um, invite you all to our next wellness webinar, which will be uh, next Friday, December 16th, um, with Dr. Natasha Mont Mont Montpellier. She'll be speaking on health literacy, the missing link to better patient outcomes. Um, and she is a BSc and ND, a naturopathic doctor. So we're really excited um, to have her. Um, and this is a full script sponsored um, webinar um, who, uh, who is also one of our gold sponsors. So we're really excited. And you'll be able to have live Q&A with Dr. Natasha and ask her questions at the end of the session. Um, again, such an excellent presentation with Dr. Singh. Um, I wanted to invite all of you, if you are feeling kind of burnt out as a health professional, we have an upcoming Heal the Healer retreat that is happening January 6th to the 8th um, at the Rancho Bernardo Inn in San Diego. There's still time to sign up for that um, with Dr. Bradley Jacobs and Dr. Rachel Abrams, two really amazing clinicians. So if you um, are in need of a kind of rejuvenating self-care retreat for clinicians, which where you'll also learn lots of great clinical information, um, take a look at that. 
And then just really, um, if you're not a member of our community, please um, think about joining. We have an incredible interprofessional community that is global. We are um, kind of reimagining healthcare and how we can um, create a global movement and a global community to move forward this work. Um, so again, connect with us at the Academy. Our um, handle on social media and all the different channels is AIHM Global. And uh, remember, you can always come back and watch these videos. Um, if you are a member, um, we do provide the slides from our webinar speakers in the membership platform. And we have so many great membership benefits. Um, mo more than anything is becoming a part of this really incredible, inspiring community. So um, thank you again for being here. Dr. Pradeep Singh, thank you for um, finishing out our week uh, with this great interprofessional uh, models talk and thank SCU for being a, a gold sponsor and for all that you're doing to move forward in a professional education. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Thank you.